uh, we're going to move on to our fourth prediction for what's going to happen in 2021. That fourth prediction uh, is under the category of, well, oh, that's just silly talk. So, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I've got one for you. And, it and, falls under that category. <laughs> yes. So please, Jared, inform me. What's what's just plain silly talk? Sorry, excuse me for like glancing out the window. It is hammering down with rain here at the moment. <laughs> and I'm just wondering if you can hear that through the broadcast. I don't yeah, really I actually know. can a little bit. I can hear. I might just close the window. Just stand by. Okay. <laughs> Standing by so that Jared can uh, take care of the flood that is imminent coming into his house. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a little better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Silly talk. In the category of that's just silly talk. <laughs> Arcade 1UP decide that given importing product to regions outside of the US costs so much, they produce an all-in-one arcade and pinball controller accessory, quite similar to the one that's behind you there, Chris. Then they partner with software partners like Zen and someone else to produce the Arcade 1UP VR Games Room with virtual creations of all their arcade cabs and pinball cabs. <laughs> wow. that's And this is all going uh, to happen in 2021. No, they're going to announce this in 2021. Oh, the announcement will be 2020. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be able to do this in 2021. It takes a lot of a lot of engineering. But, you know, they're going to start promoting this probably about, I don't know, midway, like quarter two, quarter three um, in uh, 2021. And it's going to be, think of it, you know, like in Animal Crossing, people are setting up their virtual arcades. Well, think of it a little bit like Animal Crossing, but for arcade one-up games. You're going to have like a, a virtual room that you can walk through, walk up to a game, and then... Given that Quest 2 has hands mode, you can actually see your hands in front of you and okay. interacting. You, the, your hands will actually be on the controller. And you'll be able to see yourself pushing the buttons and stuff like that. So it's going to be less less of a jarring thing where you don't see your hands in, the, in, in context of where you are in the game. So it will mean that, you know, I think I predict in this silly talk prediction that each cabinet that you buy in the game will be a premium cost, like 25 bucks. And probably 50 bucks for pinball. But by doing this, if you have a small house, you can amass a huge collection of games for about the cost of one cabinet's RRP. Yeah, so that's, just, tell it, that's uh, just silly talk. That's a silly talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic. But it's silly talk. All right, let's see how you, uh, how you, what do you think of mine? Uh, okay. My that's just silly talk prediction for 2021. Magic Pixel, makers of Zachariah Pinball. Magic Pixel buys the license for the entire Gottlieb catalog, as well as Spooky Pinball's catalog, with the help of At Games, basically helping to finance them so that At Spooky Games has pie. all these. Um, and in the process, they just toss Farsight aside like yesterday's trash. At Games does. Uh, <laughs> and fully throws their support beat behind Magic Pixel. Oh, that's... I don't know if that's silly talk or not, Chris. <laughs> like that... <laughs> but who would they get to develop? Who would they get to develop the Spooky Pimmel games? That that's would be question. that would no, that would be uh, Magic Pixel. Magic Pixel takes over all that. Oh, Magic Pixel will do it. Yeah, so Magic, Magic Pixel does their own version of Gottlieb and would mm -hmm. also uh have Spooky Pinball as uh that they would be doing the exact same thing, translating all of their tables digitally. That would be silly talk, but also excellent at the same time. <laughs> I know, because we've yeah. talked many a time about how we think that Magic Pixel would be perfect for the Gottlieb license. Um, yeah. That they would do, and it, they would that they would do go, it justice. They would they would absolutely wring every single last cent out of that license like they've done with Zachariah, and that would result in some pretty cool stuff. And there are out. hundreds of Gottlieb machines. Yeah, EMs that they could actually go and completely like take the profile layouts and the stuff on them and rethink them. Like it would just be, it would make Gottlieb's relevant again in this right. market if they did it. But it's right. silly talk. It's silly talk. In it's silly talk. Unless, of course, Ad Games helps finance it for Magic Pixel. <laughs> Magic Pixel are now essentially that they would become as part of the silly talk discussion the principal pinball developer for their platform. Correct. Correct. It actually makes more sense than silly, but anyhow, <laughs> um, I, I think I think that would be um, a, a good outcome. Yeah. All right. Um, now then, 
we come to our final prediction here. Uh, mm-hmm. This is our, you're just playing off your freaking rocker um, yeah. <laughs> predictions. Uh, Jared, do you want me to go first or do you want to take this? Yeah, look, I'll go first in this one. Okay. So, so you've got to be off your freaking rocker if you think Stern Pinball realizes they need to go all in on virtual pinball and repurpose their the pin range and their pin range format as a digital pinball offering on a network connected 40 inch cabinet with a live black box. They announced Farsight as a content partner who co announced a brand new pinball engine based on hybrid visual pinball X technology. <laughs> <laughs> there you go how about that how about that <laughs> <laughs> okay break that down for me a little bit jared sure yeah let's do that shall we <laughs> okay so first off you're saying stern would take their two thousand dollar home pin thing that they've got yep. right and they're going to convert mm-hmm. that to digital is that what i'm hearing basically yeah so they're going to convert all of the different variant tables that they released on the pin range that's like transformers spider-man star wars and they're going to make each one of those tables available as a digital pinball offering okay so that's part one yeah part part two is they are would partner with farsight to make this a reality yeah um because because, you know of farsight's pedigree with stern pinball right um, <laughs> which is silly. Uh, <laughs> and what is this other, what's this platform that you're talking about? So the fast side basically throw out their current pinball engine, which they should have done 10 years ago. Um, and co announced that their brand new pinball engine to support the, the, uh, the stern, uh, the pin range, digital, the pin range is based on a hybrid visual pinball X technology. So okay. they're going to basically buy Visual Pinball X to license on these cabinets and make some tweaks to it so it's super unique just for Stern and use their physics model to to basically play the pinball on these cabinets. There you go. All righty. <laughs> you said you wanted to be off the freaking rocker. I delivered. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Interestingly <laughs> enough... <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, well, not necessarily thinking the same direction, but just watch this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that Stern (laughs) signs a deal with Zen to -hmm. bring all of their Spike 2 tables into the digital realm, but they will be exclusively for arcade one-up cabs. And the price for each of these will only have one title on the cab, and it'll be 800 bucks. Ooh. That's very interesting. So all of those tables that use the video screen now that uh, Stern has been doing, so it's that larger mm-hmm. screen, that would be up on your your back box. That's all the Spike 2 stuff. Um, yeah. But it would be the current then Stern items uh, rather than going terribly older. And yeah, but it, you'd only get that one title. So it's kind of like what you're saying with the, uh, with the pin. Yeah, that's that idea, but now at a price point that's a little more reasonable, and yeah. you know. But so we were. <laughs> that's kind of funny that our off your that's freaking rockers are relatively in the, the same, same. realm. <laughs> that, that's because we're both quite crazy. Um, <laughs> so and, it, and this proves it. Um, I think yours is very interesting to explore, though, because you know. If you like look at the current price point of of uh, the RK One Up Pinball, and looking at you know what you would expect the premium to be from Stern to go into this, you know it makes makes quite a bit of sense to actually do that and have one title per cabinet, which fits in with the arcade One Up model of like only a few select titles per cabinet, um, and then. So what would that go back to? Like, from a catalog perspective... Batman 66? Is there anything before Batman 66 that used that monitor? I don't think so. I think it might be Batman 66, and that was the first. But, yeah, they wouldn't do Batman 66. That that carried a colossal, a colossal license. So... And that wasn't even officially a 
Spike 2, I think since then they've they've converted or whatever they're building has been converted into a Spike 2 system. Mm. But uh, that's kind of... I, I don't know. What do you... Well, WrestleMania. WrestleMania was actually Spike 1. So Spike right. 2 in like... So back then there was still... In fact, even... Well, one of the first... The pin models was actually a, a predecessor of Spike because they were testing the market. I, I guess what it. I'm trying to come at this with is, I don't, do we have a term yet for what to call the Stern tables, you know, the post DMD era Stern? What are we calling those? I don't know. Um, so that's why I'm kind of leaning towards calling it Spike 2 as a catch-all. Well, then you've got the other manufacturers who are also doing it as well, like Spooky does it, and right. and Jersey Jack does it as well. So you can't really link it to a particular... Um, um, main pinball processing unit, but calling it post DMD sounds a little flippant. Not right? Yeah. Um, I, I'd say like back back box screen pinball. <laughs> but that, that rolled even, off um, the tongue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was so 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 fluid that everyone would use it, and pick it up immediately. Yeah, yeah it's got to be like a three letter acronym, like. Um, video backbox pinball VVP or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's a hard one to say. Or it it will probably actually take the form of PC pinball because mm. that's essentially what's powering these mm. things. Like they're actually proper PCs. So because that's why that's not why I'm also figuring with that price point because you're going to have to have two monitors. Um, you're yep. going to and you're going to have to have a beefier main board to yep. run to run that back monitor as well. So. Like, I think yeah, this probably... isn't running off of Android. It's going to have to run off of uh, something something more. And that's why I'm also saying it's one table per cabinet because that's going to cover your licensing cost. Uh, that'll yeah. cover the hardware cost, and that'll make Stern happy. <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> it, I, honestly, on... and I, when I say 800, I think that's the low point. I think oh, yeah, if that... you hit it between 800 and 1,000, that uh, you'd have people that would bite. I think think that if you yeah because if a, the pin is 2000 yeah um rrp then if you made these 1000 then and they weren't just all the pin titles um i think you could probably actually ask 2000 for an f actual proper pinball table like you know like something directly after um like aerosmith for example uh, as one of the tables, you know, if you had an Aerosmith um, pinball cabinet with just that table on with the back glass art, but three quarter size, I think you could probably ask $2,000 for that table digitally because you've got to think about it. Like the, the RIP on a brand new pro is like six. So, yeah, but then you figure that now you're in at that price point, you can pretty handily go out and find a real pinball machine. Um, <laughs> not, 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 I'm not saying a, a Stern, but I'm saying no. an actual real pinball machine. You're in now, you're now within the realm of, of quite a lot of those available on the market that you can get for that price point. That's why at a thousand bucks, it's in much Australia. more. Well, <laughs> we're talking U.S. dollars here, Jared. Um, yeah. At a thousand dollars U.S., uh, you're hard pressed to find any real pins at that price. Point. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. But hey, yeah. you know what? This is all just off it, your freaking it is rocket wild, talk. Crazy. <laughs> this is off your rocket talk, so don't even don't even count on this. But you know, feel free to totally steal this idea free of charge from us, Stan, yes. and do it anyhow. Like, you know, that'd be sweet. 